Welcome back, everybody, to the Westlake Hornets Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. As today, the Hornets head out to Pasadena, California for the Rose Bowl as they're going to be taking on the number 11 ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish to finish out season number 9. Looking at the Fighting Irish, they just upset Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship. The Buckeyes were previously ranked the number one team in the country. Obviously, they fell and are not in the national championship. That game is between Texas and Alabama. Meanwhile, for Westlake, they're coming off a Pac-12 championship win over the Cardinal of Stanford. And this should be a very exciting game. Two teams coming off conference championship wins. Notre Dame is obviously a very storied program. Westlake has only existed for nine years, so you can't really say the same. And it is the end of a road for a few seniors for Notre Dame, including... Notre Dame has a few custom recruits who are seniors playing their final games, including guard size Teak Yancey and linebacker Garrett Racine. Speaking of linebackers playing their final games, Westlake knows that narrative all too well with Owen Jackson headlining the seniors, who obviously won't return next year. Welcome to the Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, California, number 11, 10 and 3 Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Set to take on the number 4, 12 and 1. Westlake Hornets, and Notre Dame wins the toss, and they'll elect to kick, so Westlake will start on offense, which is a rarity for them. This is the first ever head-to-head -head battle between Westlake and Notre Dame, so it should be a fun one. Curtis and Savage in the backfield here to start the game off. Curtis looking to throw it under a lot of pressure. Curtis, and he will be sacked, losing 11. Definitely not the start he wanted. Big play for the Irish to start it off. That was the star senior, Antoine Hill, with the sack. So now it's going to be a third and seven here for the Hornets. They don't want to start this game off with a three and out. Remember, the Hornets won the Rose Bowl last year, so I'm sure they'd love to get it two seasons in a row. Curtis looking for his tight end, Ronald Young. That'll be 14 for the sophomore and a Westlake first down. Last season in the Rose Bowl, Westlake ended up beating the Georgia Bulldogs. It was a fun game, but... It's funner when you have Pac-12 versus Big Ten, because that's always been the roots of this game. And this year, we do have that with Westlake representing the Pac-12 and Notre Dame representing the Big Ten. Second down, here's Curtis under more pressure, sailing it deep, and it's intercepted by Allen. Not the start Westlake wanted. Ori Ayeluko was the intended target. Peyton Curtis has been very efficient. However, Reggie Allen, the corner, was able to snag that ball away, and Notre Dame will get the football. Peyton Curtis is a redshirt junior, and I do think he's good enough to be an NFL draft pick, so could Curtis declare, and if he does, who will be Westlake starting quarterback next year? Third down, handoff for Clark, strange play call, he gained six, and Westlake's defense will force a three and out. Nice tackle from Steve Harvey. Look at this, the Fighting Irish have decided to fake the punt. That's Dan O'Neill who tries to throw it, and it ends up being incomplete. I mean, it is for Rose Bowl. I like the aggressiveness from Brian Kelly of the Fighting Irish, but it does not work out, and Westlake will get the ball back. Score remains tied at zero. I think that was a smart play call from Notre Dame to not just go for a punt. Obviously, in retrospect, it didn't really work out, but I don't really blame them for doing it. Second and five, handoff for Savage. He loses four. And Westlake's run blocking continues to struggle. That's Garrett Racing, eh? The custom recruit with the tackle. Or Garrett Racing, however however you say it. So now it's a third down and nine. Dante Savage has had a very good season at running back, but I feel that the poor run blocking has really limited him. And I think Westlake's run blocking is really this team's only weakness. Third and nine. Here's Curtis looking up the middle. He gets it to the junior Malik Brown for a gain of 20, and the Hornets will move the chains. Nice conversion on third down. After a few short plays that couldn't really amount to much, here's the Westlake field goal unit. The true freshman Volker Gantz, who has had a roller coaster year. He's 11 of 19 on field goals. Make that 12 for 20 as it does go through. And Gantz, the Germany native, will give Westlake a 3 0 lead with 2 minutes and 1 second left to go in the first. Notre Dame's last drive did not result in any points. It was a 3 and out, and then a fake punt. So now they have it back. Robinson on first down. Hit as he throws. He gets it to his Robinson counterpart, Matt Robinson, for a gain of 15 from Scott Robinson. Notre Dame's offense is looking very good on this drive. They are now getting closer and closer to the red zone. 
As it'll be a handoff for Clark here on first down. Trucks the senior Sean Briggs and brings Notre Dame to about the 10. It is second down at 11, basically second and goal from the 11. As it's going to be an option. Robinson tries to run it, but Cole Spencer is right there. And Robinson gets gobbled up like Thanksgiving turkey. Gobble, gobble. That's how the first quarter is going to end. Quarter number one in the books, and we've got a close one. Westlake leads it 3-0. Third and 14 from the 14 for Washington. Robinson under pressure, and he is going to be sacked by Steve Harvey. Not to be mistaken with the survey says, gentlemen, as this ain't family feud, this is football. And Harvey, the redshirt junior safety, will bring him down. Harvey was ruled as the number four corner as well as a backup safety and he's had a lot of solid roles this season and his production led him to making the second team all pack 12 as Notre Dame does make the field goal and we are now tied up at three with 634 to go in the half. You're probably wondering why Westlake is starting at the three. Well the kick return went pretty much as worsely as it could have. Sean Briggs thought he was in the end zone. The teammates told him to run out, so he got tackled at like the six. Then a clipping penalty on Lawrence McCoon occurred, and then this happened. Dante Savage loses two, almost getting backed up into the end zone. Robert Walters for one with the tackle. And that play shows the one weakness of Westlake football, the run blocking. Dante Savage is so, so talented, but just the lack of run blocking has really prevented him from going far this year. 3rd and 12, Curtis just tries to avoid the safety. Risky pass for Wiggins, who somehow gets the first. To say that the Hornets driving is a miracle is an understatement, as I don't know how they still have the ball right now. This drive has at least started out as a disaster. Here's Curtis, sacked again, as that's once again the senior, Antoine Hill, with his second of the day, forcing a 3rd and long. So now it's a third and 15. Westlake is backed up at the eight. This is their sixth play, and as you can tell, they haven't moved too far. Third down, Curtis up the middle just a little. That's for freshman Ulri Iyaluko for another conversion, this time of 21 yards out. Once again, my point remains, the fact that the Hornets are still driving is a miracle. First down, Curtis will hand it off for Patrick Daly. Daly has blocks. And this is what happened when you create open holes. Down the field, Daly will not be caught. That'll be a 72-yard touchdown, and the Hornets will regain the lead. That is a change of pace back, ladies and gentlemen. And Patrick Daly was able to change the pace of the game. The blocking was actually kind to him on that run, and it showed. And the Hornets are back up on top. Notre Dame's offense had a three and out. And Westlake has it right back, up 10-3, and with the football, as here's Dante Savage on the run, he loses even more yards. Negative two for Savage, who is at only positive four rushing yards on the day. Robert Walters with his second tackle for loss. This is Dante Savage's first offseason where he's eligible to go pro, and if he were to, this would definitely not be the ending to his college career that he wanted. Savage loses even more yards, now it's a third and 14. J.D. James with the tackle. None of this blame can be put on Dante Savage. He's had no rushing lanes at all. I don't know why. Now it's a third and 14. Curtis looking to throw it. He's going to try to get it to Nigel Wiggins, who passed 1,000 yards today. And he gains 20 on that one. And more importantly, a Westlake first down. The clock continues to tick, nearing the two-minute mark here in the first half. Malik Brown in motion. Curtis will look to throw it. Curtis looking for Noah Newton, and it's picked off by Racine as Peyton Curtis has not started off this game well, and the senior Racine brings it down to about the 50, and Notre Dame will get the ball back. Definitely the way you want to play in your final game if you're Mr. Racine. The only logical and ethical Patriots fan on this planet, might I add, and Peyton Curtis in this offense has not played well up to this point. If Peyton Curtis wants to go pro... His draft stock is certainly going to take a little bit of the dip today as he's not played well at all in this one. Third down, Warren with the play, running by the speedy Sean Briggs, and that'll be 19 for Calvin Warren. It is second and one here for Notre Dame. They are now in the red zone as here's Robinson under some pressure. Looking, he has an open man. That's Rasheed Townsend, 
Nice tackle from Pino, but not before gaining 17 and bringing the Irish closer. Now it's second, or not second, first and goal at the one. As Robinson, it's going to be an option toss for Clark, and Philip Clark will get the score. And Notre Dame will tie it up with 1.23 to go. Excellent drive from the Fighting Irish. And now Peyton Curtis in the offense is going to need to play better, or else he will not be in a good position starting the second half. Westlake just does not look like themselves right now offensively. Let's see if they can get things going here on this possession and regain the lead. Heading into halftime, that won't help. Savage loses four yards. What do you know? Robert Walters with the play. Wesley calls time. I don't know why the Hornets just do not care about run blocking, but uh, it's, it's just strange that Dante Savage has 14 yards today, and he's so talented. Second down. There's Ronald Young wide open down the field, and Young is brought down at the 35. Very nice play for the Hornets, and as a team, they now have 4,000 passing yards on the campaign. Now it's third down from the 35. Hornets down in their last timeout. Notre Dame also has one timeout. Not that it really matters at this point of the half. As Curtis looking. He is Malik Brown who makes the catch. Brown trying to run around the defender. And he does. And he is tackled at the one. Very nice play for the Hornets who now just have to punch it in. Second and goal at the one here for Westlake. They still have a timeout. So they can still try to run it. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. Toss for Dante Savage. Who is tackled, but not before finding the end zone. And the Hornets will regain the lead with just 11 seconds until the halftime break. First half in the books, and it's been a pretty exciting game. Westlake leads it 17-10. Second and six, handoff for Clark, who runs past Cole Spencer. Gets by the diving Brenton Scott, and will gain 17. Nice start to the possession for Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish are definitely still have a fighting chance, if you know what I mean. Let's see if they can keep the groove going. Back to Clark this time. He is immediately wrapped up in the backfield by Cole Spencer. That was bad English, but whatever. Nice play from Spencer. Second and 12 for the Fighting Irish from about the Notre Dame 48. As here's Robinson. It's going to be a screen pass of some sort. And it looks like that call goes against him. Marcus Shelton, the sophomore defensive tackle, Ends up getting the sack. After forcing a stop, Westlake has it back here on offense. Let's try it. Let's see if they can make it a two-point score, or a two-point lead, I mean. And plays like that won't help. Curtis, off-balance pass, intercepted again by Racing. Curtis not even going to try to tackle him, and Notre Dame will tie it up. Curtis's third interception of the game. I believe he's only thrown four or five all year. And the Irish will tie it up. The second INT of the game for Racing. I think it's safe to say Peyton Curtis has played the worst game of his career. Zero touchdowns, three interceptions. Luckily for him, the game is still tied. Second down, I don't know what idea that was from Curtis. He tosses it to Savage, who loses six. So just another bad play from Curtis. And Savage only has 14 yards today. This game is tied up, but Westlake's offense has been absolutely atrocious today. 14 rushing yards for Savage. Peyton Curtis has been even worse. But the defense has been the bright spot. There's Owen. Hit stick Jackson. Unfortunately, I won't be getting to say that too much more. But Scott Robinson is negative 26 rushing yards on the day. Westlake's offense has it back. Last drive, Peyton Curtis did not look good. Even though it was not on, this, uh, on the video, Notre Dame dropped a pair of interceptions, so Peyton Curtis is lucky. He's only at three. This play, that was actually a phenomenal throw from Curtis, who gets it to Noah Newton. No flags. It did look like Curtis was past the line of scrimmage when he made the pass, but it will count, and that'll be a first down for the Edmonton Canada native, Noah Newton. Now it is first and ten here for the Hornets, after the big gain from Newton. Dante Savage in motion will be a fake handoff. Curtis... Has time, scrambling. Now he's looking deep in the end zone for an open man. That's Malik Brown. This is the Peyton Curtis we all know and love as he gets it to his star slot receiver. And Westlake is back on top. Notre Dame is only down by seven, and they can get back in this game. First down, here's Robinson looking to throw it under pressure. And he is going to be sacked. Marcus Shelton with his second of the game. 
Now it's second and 15 after a five yard loss, courteous of the Tacoma Washington native Shelton. So here's Robinson looking to throw it under a little bit of pressure. He has an open man deep, and that's his Robinson counterpart, Matt, for a gain of 22. Fourth quarter underway, and ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a game. Westlake up 24-17. Notre Dame has it at the 20, third and six. Robinson under pressure, hit as he throws, but he does get it to Victor Bill, who gets the first, bringing Notre Dame inside the 10. Notre Dame has been better than Westlake today, but the Hornets have just found a way to keep the lead. Let's see if the Irish can stop that lead. Is on second and short, Rashid Townsend, the tight end, will get the easy touchdown. And with 6.36 to go, the Fighting Irish have tied it up. Westlake has been extremely good on third downs today. 7 for 9 to be exact. But they need to have the big one here. Third and 12. Maybe the most important third down of the game up to this point. Curtis having trouble finding someone. And it's almost intercepted again by Racine. So that'll force a 3 and out. And the Irish get it back immediately. Third and 2. Westlake needs a stop here. Let's see if Notre Dame can get it and continue the drive. As Robinson will look to throw it, surprisingly. He has time, now under pressure, and is sacked by the star junior, Cole Spencer. And Westlake will get the ball right back. 24 all, with exactly 420 left to go in the fourth. 420 blaze it. As here's Curtis on second down. He has an open man, that's the speedster, Noah Newton. Newton! Breaks the defender's ankles, but then is immediately tackled by him, but not before gaining 23 yards and a first down. This is definitely the most important four minutes of Westlake's season. Let's see if they can clutch it out and get the victory. Second and two, Curtis. Nice pass for Malik Brown, who had the touchdown earlier. Brown brings it inside the 10, and the Hornets will have it at first and goal. First and goal at the seven. Let's see if Westlake can punch it in and regain the lead. With under three and a half to go, Curtis will look to throw it. Curtis scrambling. He has an open man in the end zone. That's Malik Brown with his second receiving touchdown of the day. And Westlake will gain the lead with 318 left to go. And now it's up to the defense to get a stop and finish the game. Under three minutes left to go, Westlake's offense was able to clutch it out and get some points. Now it's time for Notre Dame to answer. Second down. Robinson. Short pass for Townsend, who somehow breaks by Harvey, breaks another tackle from Patterson, and gets a big game. Huge play from Rashid Townsend, and Notre Dame will keep the drive going. That wasn't a third down, so it's not like the drive would stop, but I guess they'll move the chains, as it's going to be an option. Owen Jackson, the senior, there with his second tackle for loss of the day, and one of the last tackles for loss of his collegiate career. Looks like defense will really miss Owen Jackson inside, but I'm sure his replacement, Justin McGee, will do just fine. Here's Robinson looking deep. A dart for Victor Bell. Bad coverage from Harvey, and that'll be a gain of 22. And goal at the 1. Can Westlake get the stop, or will Notre Dame punch it in and tie it up? Under a minute and a half left to go, as it's going to be an option. Sean Briggs misses the tackle, so does another defender, and Scott Robinson will roll in the end zone after breaking about four tackles. And with 119 to go, the Irish have tied it up. Breaks the tackle from Briggs, breaks the tackle from one of the corners, Bowman and Harvey, and Notre Dame is up pending the PAT. One minute left to go. Westlake has two timeouts. Let's see if Curtis can drive his team down the field and win them the Rose Bowl. Second down. Here's Curtis. He has an open man. That's Nigel Wiggins for a big first down. He gained 16. 45 seconds remaining. Westlake has it at a, a little bit past midfield. And remember, a field goal does win the game for Westlake, so I'm sure Volker Gantz is warming, warming up on the sidelines as we speak. Daly drops the pass on second down. That is huge for Notre Dame. You cannot drop that if you're Daly. Drop could be costly for Westlake, especially if they don't get the conversion here on 3rd and 10. Curtis looking to throw it. Curtis scrambling under pressure. Tough throw, and it's caught by Malik Brown for 20. What an incredible first down conversion for the Hornets as Brown is continuing his career day. 2nd 13 after a 3-yard loss, Malik Brown was pushed out of bounds. Curtis will look to throw it. Curtis. 
having trouble finding anyone. He's going to dump it off to Daly, who loses two more, forcing the Hornets to call time. Third and 15, 26 seconds left in the game. Westlake is down to their last timeout. They're close to field goal range, but I don't really think they're in field goal range. It's a short pass for Sean Briggs, who only gains 14, and I believe we will see the field goal unit. Here we go, folks. Vulgar Guns, the true freshman. Can he be the hero? From 38 yards, the kick is up, and it is good. Guns makes it, and Westlake will take a three-point lead with just 18 seconds remaining in the game. Eight seconds remaining. Notre Dame does have one timeout, but it looks like they're going to heat it deep and go for the Hail Mary, and I don't really see any other choice for them. Robinson looking deep downfield, and it is caught by Josh Wilson, the shutdown corner. He's going to run with it for whatever reason. I don't know why, and he is going to be tackled. I believe that's his ninth interception of the season, which will set a school record, and that is a perfect way to end this game. Josh Wilson, the unsung hero of this defense, picks it off. And with that, the Westlake Hornets are Rose Bowl champions in dramatic fashion. This game went down to the end. The final seconds, 34-31, an incredibly hard-fought game from Notre Dame. But it's not enough. The Hornets will end their season with a victory. They will finish all 13-1. Next episode will not be the offseason. It will be the national championship between Texas and Alabama. We will watch that game, and then after that, we've got the offseason. And what a ride it's been for these seniors. Owen Jackson, Sean Briggs, and company. This is it for them, and it's definitely a good way to end their careers. Have a good one, everybody. Hey, hey, man!